Hi, my name is Annie and I'm here to tell you why you should never use Q-tips in your ear. I've honestly lost count of how many people have told me they've never touched a Q-tip since I've told them this story, so now I'm here to tell you why these are the devil stick. In November 2020, I took a trip to Florida with my family, uh, where I flew there, as you can see, and I got off the plane feeling some pain in my right ear, but I figured it was just due to air pressure, so I kind of just ignored it. Over the next two days, the pain got a lot worse, so my mom took me to an urgent care just to be safe. They looked in my ear, said it looked red and pussy and that it was probably infected, so just sent me home with some antibiotics. Once again, the pain got progressively worse, so bad that I had to put my head in between my knees and lay on the ground to get through the pain. So I went back to urgent care where they looked in my ear again and this time saw a collection of rotten black and yellow chunks of q-tip ends that had been collecting in my ear for an unknown amount of time and finally got infected um, so badly that it ruptured my eardrum. I don't know how they didn't see this the first time, but they flushed it out, got everything out, and it felt so much better. Because there was a hole in my eardrum, they sent me to an ENT specialist who took a look and thankfully said I wouldn't need surgery or anything and that it would just heal over time and I should just enjoy the rest of my vacation. But the fun didn't stop there. Exactly one week later, I noticed pain in my left ear, so I went back to the same ENT. Despite showering with like a cotton swab in my ear so water wouldn't get in there and never going swimming or in the ocean at all, um, I had another infection and he, he honestly didn't know why, but I just did. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll just take the drops that I have and like, here we go, round two. That was a Friday. By Saturday morning at 5 a.m., the pain was so bad, I had to beg my parents to take me to the ER, where they tried to look in, but at that point, it had swollen shut, um, and they couldn't really do much besides give me a Percocet to calm down and send me home. Obviously, by that night, the painkillers wore off, and I was in an excruciating amount of pain. So I called Teladoc, where they gave me an emergency steroid prescription, which my dad ran to go pick up from Walgreens, um, that I would take to at least just get the swelling to go down. It eventually, like, slowly started to go down, but basically over the next four days, I, if I wasn't taking Tylenol or Advil every two to four hours, I was in an incredible amount of pain. Okay, this is about to run out, so I'm gonna do a part two. What's the worst thing you've seen on someone's phone or laptop by accident? Because basically, I was the computer, like, nerd in my neighborhood. So one time, my neighbor, like, his laptop wasn't working. So he's like, hey, can you fix something? And it was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. <laughs> Basically, I went over, mind you, I'm friends with his kids, right? One of them's a year older than me, one of them is younger than me. So I was just like, I was friends with both of them. I come over, we're sitting at the dining table, it's him and the entire family, mom, dad, two boys, whatever. We're all sitting at the dining table, I'm going in, do a simple virus scan, whatever, tells me something's up with the downloads. I go to the downloads folder, I'm like going through it, one thing sticks out, a Kim Possible folder. Mind you, at the time, I used to watch Kim Possible. I liked Kim Possible. I wasn't traumatized by fucking Kim Possible. So I click on this folder, I open it. First, it's all pictures. And I was like, oh, okay. Maybe like there's a file that wasn't, you know, supposed to be there that's there, whatever. Click on the first picture, it's a squad picture, classic. Just, you know, the cast, whatever. The dude that's in the locker, Ron, the little rat, whatever. Um, next picture is um, Kim absolutely getting railed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> and I freaked out, so I started clicking next really fast, and who okay, cares? Why? It got worse and worse and worse. It was Kim, and then Ron, and then it was the rat, and then it was the dude in the locker. I didn't even know he had a second half. I thought it was just here and up. I just thought it was here and up. I'm so confused. <laughs> and then the guy that's a year older than me, he freaks out. He finally registers what's going on. He shuts the laptop real quick. And then the parents kick me out and the little brother. By the time that we stepped foot outside of that house, the little brother told the entire neighborhood. Everyone called him Kim. Um, I'm, I, I will not say the nickname, but I'm so fucking traumatized. I love Kim Possible. Not anymore. Can't do it. So two years ago, my brother died. Everyone loved him. He was a star soccer player. He was a legacy with records upon records. 
But now there's this new guy at my school, a new soccer player, and everyone's predicting he's going to shatter my brother's records. And I don't want any part in that, so I try to keep my distance, and that is until my disinterest in him intrigues him. To learn more, read Perfect Little Flaws by Jennifer Ann Shore. Story time about the girl who tried to talk me into doing the nasty with her dad. Literally. So a little background information. Two months before this whole situation, I had met her through one of my friends at a party. She was really funny, really nice. We're going to call this girl Jessie. So when my friend and I left the party, I had asked her about Jessie. And she was like, oh, I wouldn't really hang around her. She's just like a really weird person. Now, I didn't really take my friend's word for it. Mainly because in the past, my friend has gotten really jealous whenever I've started hanging out with other people. So I decided to find out for myself. Which now I realize that was probably not one of my best ideas. So a few weeks later, we hung out with her again. And I got her number that night. Her and I started hanging out a lot. And her and I were both seniors in high school. Well, when I would go over to her house, her dad would be super weird around me. He would just be very overly nice and touchy with me. And her mom and her dad were divorced. Well, the one night I'm sitting in Jessie's room and she comes upstairs and she's like, OMG, I have to tell you what my dad said. Like for part two. Okay, part two about the girl who tried to talk me into doing the nasty with her dad. Literally. Like I said, she comes upstairs to her bedroom and she's like, OMG, I have to tell you what my dad just said about you. And she would literally do this all the time. She would be like, oh, my dad just said that you're so pretty. Or my dad just said that if you were his age, he would totally date you. And just like super weird things like that. Well, I was like, oh, like, what did he say? And she was like, OMG, I feel so weird telling you. Like, I really don't want to tell you. She was like, I feel like you'll think he's weird. Low key, she didn't know that I already thought that he was weird. But I was like, oh, okay. She was like, okay, fine, I'll just tell you. My dad said that he would totally fuck you. And I was like, oh, that's really gross. Like, he's really fucking weird for that. And she was like, no, 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 you should totally do it. And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, that does not make me feel comfortable. And she was like, dude, you don't understand. He'll pay you. And her dad was super rich. Like, he owned four of his own companies and everything. But still, that was not enough to bribe me to do it with this man. So I grab my stuff and I am, like, about to walk out of her room. And she's like, wait, no, don't go. Like, I was just joking. And I was like, no, I'm still gonna leave. And she was like, no, please, please, please don't. Like, how are you gonna get home? I'm not driving you. So I start walking down the stairs and I stop and look into the living room. And I see her dad laying naked on the couch just watching the stairs. It's like he was literally waiting for me to come down here to do the nasty with him. So I start running out the door and her dad chases me and he's like, hey, like, where are you going? What's wrong? And I'm like covering my eyes. I turn around and I'm like, you're what's fucking wrong. You're so fucking gross. After that, she texted me begging me not to tell anybody. And I don't really see her anymore except for when we go to parties and she just happens to be there. So I ran across this video of Chris Pratt. This is my chance to talk to Tim McGraw. <laughs> And he catches me staring at him a few times. He had performed a song that night. I said, hey, Tim, it's a, it's a great song tonight. And he's like, hey, thank you. And he kind of, like, I'm going to avoid you. You might be a weirdo. <laughs> and uh, I said, man, uh, just, a, just a huge, huge fan, a huge fan of both you guys. He's like, thank you, thank you. I said, I'm wearing your cologne. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if he was just like, being being polite but he was like oh and then I, he, there was that moment i was like oh no i'm wearing your clothes oh no it's really gut-wrenching embarrassing he's got it a little bit wrong because i was you know i'm a big fan of his as well so i, I was probably catching glimpses of him and everybody else it wasn't quite as one way as he, he's saying it was and, and he, he did smell pretty good by the way Am I the asshole for telling the truth at my best friend's wedding during my toast? I'm a 30-year-old male and my best friend got married last week. I just bought a house and my wife is expecting our son in November, so I let him know I was limited in what I could contribute financially. But I did tell him I would try my best. So I went to the bachelor party in Miami, I rented the tux, and paid for mine and my wife's dinner at the rehearsal dinner. I also had a gift of $300 that I was going to give them, but we will get to why I didn't. His fiancée at the time would text me multiple times a day with updates. Fine. I didn't always respond and it got to the point where if I didn't respond at least once a day, I'd get a call from my buddy. She texted me for the following reasons. 1. My wife was not allowed to talk about our pregnancy at all. She didn't want anyone to focus on that more than her, the bride. 2. She was not going to order any special food for my wife. 
No one asked her to. My wife was fine with whatever she was going to be served. Three, I was not helping the groom enough. He had to help her with favors, seating charts, and programs, so I had to help him with those things according to her. Four, she said if I was a true best man, I would offer to pay for the bar bill. I don't even know what that means. Five, she had to read and approve my speech before the rehearsal dinner and wanted to be included as much as my buddy. She told me to make things up if I had to. I was not allowed to include anyone but the two of them and no inside jokes or stories about my buddy that didn't include her. Six, her last text said to tell my wife to keep it together and not make a pregnancy scene during the wedding. Also, she wanted her to choose a dress that downplayed her pregnancy as much as possible. I was just so aggravated I spoke to my buddy to see if he could reason with her. He told me to just play ball this one time, it's her day and to cut him a break because he'd be dealing with her nonsense for the rest of his life. The day of, all the bride and my best friend do is scold me, berate me and bark orders. I head down to the bar for the drink. The bride's mother is there and warns me not to get drunk because I've ruined her daughter's day enough. That was the final straw. I didn't give them the car with the cash and in the speech, I used my friend's exact wording about having to deal with her nonsense for the rest of his life. I wished him the best and told him I'd always be there for him, especially during the divorce. So, am I the asshole? Yeah, you are. Good job. Your sweet music in my ear like the marshmallow You were wearing yellow, so I had to follow Like the sun, you brought light to my life, a happy fellow When I'm not with you, I know I'm in a place less than perfect Beautiful memories we share got me feeling special Fighting for our love every day because it's worth it There's nothing to lose when I'm with you You got my emotion Even when I break your heart, you're patient your love is steady on the motion You're my ride or die, you're my ride or die You got my emotion Even when I break your heart, you're patient Your love is steady on the motion You're my ride or die, you're my ride or die